This is Kevin Collins with Home Theater Forum on day three at Cedia in Indianapolis. Today we have Joe Kane from Daylight who's going to be talking to us about some of the JKP screens and uh, things around 3D both from front projection and from flat panel displays. Hello Joe. Good morning, it's wonderful to be here. Thanks for inviting me. What um I've I've been following your screens that you've had before, and you've, you before uh, you were following you know, some different manufacturers, and lately you've, you've come along with uh, the daylight screens with JKP, and I know you started out with one uh, screen. Can you, for a lot of our members, you know, they might not really understand what why would J Joe with JKP uh, endorse a screen? What what goes behind that? Well. First of all, uh, this screen evolved from the fact that I had developed a projector and the quality of the projector um, was something that I couldn't actually show because the screens that were available had a signature to them. In other words, they were adding their own um, nuances to the picture that didn't allow me to show what the projector was doing. So the gestation of the Affinity Series screens from Daylight came from an, a need to have a screen that could show me what the projector is doing instead of a screen that uh, would compensate for something, as an example, compensating for ambient light or a lack of light or uh, whatever from the projector. So we ended up developing what became the antithesis of anything any screen company has ever made before because screen companies have had a reputation for making products that as i pointed out compensate for something i wanted a screen that didn't compensate for anything a screen that would just show me what the projector was doing and in the process the screen doesn't add noise to the picture it doesn't add hot spotting to the picture and it doesn't add color changes to the picture. In other words, when you move your head, the color changes. So the screen offered me the most uniform picture I had ever seen. In fact, as much as I knew that I needed the screen, I had no idea how badly I needed the screen until I got it. Isn't there other features uh, on the screen, uh, you know, just First, you know, certain screens. If you don't, if they don't have a high gain, then you you start to lose the hot spotting and the color shifting. But there, it seemed like there was issues when you said your new projector. Obviously, referring to the Samsung 800 and 900, where you were first doing a projector for the first time that was 1080p. You know, it was coming out with the Blu-ray and HDVD format. Wasn't there something about the texture that with 1080p, this screen kind of addressed in terms of sparkles or something like well, that? Well, that was, that was certainly the beginning of getting involved, that um, when screens have gain, you usually end up spray coating them with a surface that will push light forward. And that surface, the granularity of the surface, interferes with the pixelization from the display. And basically what happens is it adds noise to the picture. Now, I'm confident um, all your viewers have seen sparkles and uh, granularity in a screen. Well, that actually seriously detracts from the quality of the picture. And you don't know how much it detracts until it's gone. And once it's gone, it, it's suddenly, oh my gosh, you walk into anybody else's home that has a screen with granularity in it, and you look at them and say, how could you possibly put up with that? So the granularity was the primary reason that I went after a different screen. But because basically uh, the corrosivity or the coarseness of the granularity dictates how much the screen will push light forward. If it's a really coarse screen, it'll push for light forward by a lot. If it's a fine screen, it will not push light forward by as much. But even a matte white screen has coercivity. And so ideally, I wanted a screen that didn't have any coercivity so that no matter what resolution uh, the projector, and it was the 1080p that really made me aware of the problem, but if we get to 4K or 8K or 132K, whatever we get to, having no coercivity to the screen whatsoever means that this screen 
has the life of anything that's going to come in the future. So instead of just trying to reduce the grain, getting rid of it was the real solution to a high quality picture. When you when the when the point nine gain screen, there you there's a what's the two screen gains that you guys have? Well, there's actually three in the product line. There's a point six gain screen, a point nine gain screen, and a one point one gain screen. Now, most people, I want to clarify this because most people can, um, may be confusing gain with directivity. Those are two completely different things. Directivity is how much the screen pushes light forward, and you can tell if a screen has a lot of directivity because it will hot spot. Uh, the gain is actually what it does to the in incoming light. So relative to a reference, the 0.6 gain screen will deliver 6 tenths of the amount of light that a reference reflector would d deliver. The 0.9 gain screen delivers 0.9 times the amount of light. And the 1.1 actually delivers more light than is uh, reflected off a reference reflector. Now, in order to get that gain, there is some directivity. So each one of the screens has a little bit of directivity. They each have the same amount of directivity. They do push the light forward just a little bit, but not enough so that you see hot spotting. So uh, the 1.1 gain, uh, that number probably reflects how much, it, it probably accurately reflects how much uh, forward each of these screens pushes light. So then, we have the family of screens so that if you need a medium gray screen that's available in the 0.6 if you need a light gray screen that's available in the 0.9 and if you need a white screen that's available in the 1.1 now what what would be a decision factor for people that are looking to build their own home theater on uh, what of those three they would want well the decision factor is based in in my opinion the decision factor is based on getting a decent black level out of the display device and as an example uh, any of the lamp based projectors have some ambient light so even if you're putting in black as a video signal there's still going to be some light on the screen and so i try to advise people to pick the screen that will allow them to get pick the screen type and size that will allow them to get the black level they want. As an example, if there's a fixed amount of ambient light coming from a projector, if you put that fixed amount of light on a very big screen, the level of that light will be low. But if you can't put that on a big screen, then you have to use a gray screen to pull it down. If you only have room for a smaller screen, then you use the gray screen to pull it down. Now, in actual physical size, that is projector dependent. And hopefully the dealers know enough to measure the projectors and determine what that ambient light condition is and then pick the screen size and screen type that best fits the projector that you're trying to use. Would, would someone be able to take their projector into a, a dealer and you know just use a light meter to measure a particular foot Lambert's coming off the screen to kind of make a decision on which size it went or is it more complicated than that? Um, the dealer, uh, you're, you're saying take it to a dealer. Um, I would hope the dealer would actually have a meter so that they can measure the light because that's something that's going to be necessary. So just taking it to any dealer might not work, that you probably have to find a dealer who would actually know how to make these kinds of measurements. And uh, you know, making decisions on where to put this, I actually think that responsibility belongs with the dealer in the sense that every projector is different. And as you've walked around this show and you've seen different projectors, the ambient light from each projector is completely different. The light output capability is completely different. As an example, if I were to take a Christie and put it on a 15-foot wide screen, I'd want a 0.6 gain screen. My projector, if I put it on a 6-foot wide screen, I need a 0.6 gain screen. So those are total, two huge different things, but it's projector dependent. Um, in making the decision of the type of screen and the size of the screen. Is there, uh, for the members that we have out there that already have screens, 
and might be interested in um, you know changing screens, which will come up with some reasons on why they might want to. Is there any way that they can get a sample from daylight that they you know they could have? put up on the screen and then, you know, view it and kind of see a swatch difference? Or is that something that's not recommended to, to do at all? Actually, I do recommend doing that. That um, Daylight hands out, I think they're 8 inch by 10 inch um, pieces, samples of the screen material. And dealers should have these so that um, the customer can take it home and look at it. I actually recommend doing this because you'll see a huge difference in picture quality between what's out there uh, other than the affinity screens and the affinity screens. The difference has been shocking. When I, uh, when I first premiered the screen as an example, almost everybody who walked into my display looked at the picture and said, oh, you have a new projector. Is, no, I have a new screen. And the difference was so dramatic that everyone who already knew what my projector looked like was absolutely shocked. They were absolutely certain I had a new projector. When they saw my projector on the screen, the difference is so large that no one missed the difference. And everybody was all excited because I had a new projector and, well, no, I have a new screen that's allowing me to show what the original projector was capable of doing.